4.35. Tom Ostov, Sturbridge, who qualified with a 4.30. Janet Park of Concord, New Hampshire, who qualified with a 4.22. And Bruno DeFeo of East Boston, who qualified with a 4.12. Everybody, that's everybody here and everybody out there. We've already told you this is the 19th annual championship, and our bowlers are competing for a first prize of $10,000, second prize of $5,000, third prize of $2,500, fourth prize of $1,500, and a fifth prize of $1,000. The winner will also receive the Rotman Shays, a luxurious velvet recliner from Brookline. It has extra deep padding and reclines just two inches from the wall. And from Din Brothers of Boston Holyoke come these handsome trophies, marked 1994, permanent souvenirs. They will be inscribed, and the bowler will have something that he will really treasure. And you know, this one is a very unusual one because it is the first time we have a woman competing in the championship. Okay. Of course, I didn't put any pressure on you by doing that, Janet. No, not at all. And now, to explain more about it, here is Ed Harding. You, you didn't put any pressure on her, but you know they're going to have a female figurine for the female figure for the top of the, the trophy, too. So we're politically correct, we are. Yes. You know the format for this program. You're going to start at the fifth spot and move up to the top. Let me break it down for you so you know who will be bowling against whom. The fifth seed, Bruno DeFeo, will have the chance of going against Janet Park first. And then the survivor goes against Tommy Ulster. The survivor will go against Tom Morgan. And then Dick O'Connor will join the fray in a two-box, two-string two final. So we're set and ready to rock and roll. More than two boxes. Yeah. More than two boxes, yeah. two strings. <laughs> okay. On that Are you note, sure it's more than two boxes? <laughs> yeah. Let's get underway right after this, shall we? This Candlepin Bowling Championship show is sponsored in part by the Massachusetts Bowling Association. Attention Candlepin League bowlers. All kinds of fall leagues are starting soon. Leagues for day and evening bowlers, men's, women's, mixed groups, and seniors. So bring a friend into your league this fall. Enjoy the excitement of Candlepin bowling together, and you or they could win a trip for two to Las Vegas, the Bahamas, Orlando, Cancun, or Bermuda. Bring a friend and win this fall at participating MBA Candlepin Bowling Centers. All right, we're getting underway, and as you can see, Bruno DeFeo will lead it off. He was the number five seed. <laughs> Got a break. He has a spare leave on the right side, six and ten. He's from East Boston with a high single of 192, a high triple of 465, an average of 124. For a spare? Yes. Bruno ordinarily has a pretty uh, large contingent who follow him, but uh, one member of that group is getting married at 6.30 tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of those folks are not here. Working on the spare, he has big fill. Oh, wait a minute. Almost a strike. Everything down except the four pin. And wood right in front of it. Yes, he has two consecutive marks to begin. And now history is made as Janet Pock comes up. And Bruno delivers an interesting little challenge right off the top. It's not as if Janet doesn't have enough pressure on her shoulder. What an answer. Great start. Everything down except the nine pin. A single pin to pick up. You talk about pressure now. Single pin. She has it. 
And all that will do is just release any pressure, if any at all, had been accompanying her to the line. She will Are you sit kidding? back and relax. She, she had no, she's a pressure. cool customer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what she can do now with this. She gets uh, how many? I thought for a minute that pin might come around and knock down a couple of more. So she has the one, two, four, and ten. Lisa Wood alongside the two and the four, and she fires, and oh. she got everything except the head pin. mentioned a box previous how tough it is to go get that single pin. Now Bruno DeFeo. He was a runner up for the show back in 1991. And how about that he's left the uh, is it going to nine going to fall. Boy you don't see that very often the whole back mm. wall the picket fence. So the fill is six and he's got a piece of wood between the nine and ten and another between the seven and eight. Oh, oh yes. And fifty dollars in bonus money for Bruno DeFeo. And a Bruno starts out real strong. Three marks right off the top and gets the picket fence. Chop them all down. That one got away. Off to the left, leaving six pins. Bill is four. And he left the head pin. First pin he's left here. Without marking the box. Bingo. It's a 10. <laughs> Janet Park on the line. Her third box. And she has the same problem that Bruno did, holding onto the ball just a little too long before releasing it. Got just two. <laughs> Got them all. Back and make them Great comeback for Janet Park. First ball disappointing, second ball, get them all. Oh, too bad. Half push to right side, just two as she punched out the three and the nine. And still chopping some wood. Now she still has five pins up. The one seven ten, but she also has the five and the six. You can see the numbers on the screen in front of you. The lead for DeFeo, 17 pins. Keith Williams keeping score on the electronic scoreboard. Ralph Stewart, our love line judge and referee. Bruno DeFeo on the line. This is lane nine here. At the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, he has another spare leave. You know, we talk about the pressure that Janet's under. What about the pressure that Bruno's under? Bowling against her. That's right. I didn't even want to mention that at well, first. Well, you know. Ooh. Ooh, it's shaking. Because you know that each of these four men has said to himself, oh, I hope I don't lose to the lady. The way Bruno keeps going, he don't leave any pins there, you're going to do well. That's right, he's cleaning up. All right, six box with this one string roll off. And Bruno DeFeo is in the challenger position since he was fifth seed. The three pin and the six. Wood to the right. Oh, he thought he had that one, and I guess he had reason to think so because it looked like it was going to be 
with that kind of a hit. Still hasn't left any pins, though. Three straight tens for Bruno DeFeo. All right, Janet down by 17 as she comes in for the fifth and sixth. She has four horsemen left side. She has a group of folks who, who have come down from New Hampshire to root for her. Oh! Everything down except the seven pin. The ten. They're wearing T-shirts that say, Go Pocky. Go Pocky. Janet is an excellent athlete. She's a good golfer, which is not surprising. And she holds our ladies' record programs for the high single at 165, a high triple to 422. 5-9 for spare, yes! Yeah. Seventh and eighth now. Trailing by 17 pins. You need extras. She will have one when she steps up next. Only bonus money so far. Bruno DeFeo with three consecutive marks to begin the string. Oh. He comes back now with a strike. Touch them all. Bruno is single. He engaged to be married. Employed by Rappi and Swanson Incorporated. He won only one week, but he bowled well enough to make the championship show. He got aced out of it about five, mm -hmm. four years ago mm -hmm. on the last day. Gary Casey did that to him. He's now still three pins. He's 23 years old. He remembers that day vividly. So seven is the fill, and in the box it is a ten. So again, he has cleaned them all. 106 to eight. Now Janet Park comes up, and she's working on a spare. That one went off to the left, but she got a bit of a break. She got seven as the fill, and has left the one, three, nine. the one and the nine, but the three refused to go. Nine bucks. 78 18, 18 pins down through boxes scored, and now at a point of desperation. And delivering. Nice first ball. She has left the five and the eight. No wood. So she has a spare opposite the 10 to pick up uh, some of those 18 pins that she trails by. Final two boxes now. And that's right. And if that's the point we're at. Two boxes left, one string roll up. Thin hit by Bruno DeFeo. <laughs> Unusual lead with the Four, five, six across the middle, and the corner's full, seven and ten. No wood. Got the four and seven. Still three pins standing. It's a nine. First pin he's left. That's right. The first time he has left the pin standing. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Tim Michelle assisting. Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. He has all the headaches <laughs> watching us and watching us make mistakes, then trying to cover up. 
That's why. That's why he makes the big bucks. Okay. No, he did not make the spear. So, uh, for what it's worth, in the eighth, ninth, and tenth, no marks for Bruno DeFeo, and Janet comes up to fire a fill on a mark in the eighth, and she has an opportunity, of course, to come from behind and make a couple of marks. All right, Bruno's out at 123. And Fox stands 88 with this ball All right, here. this is the fill. She didn't oh. like it. The minute she threw it, she didn't like it. I know. Just four. Yeah, she threw up her hands as soon as she saw what she was going to do with it. Good comeback. All right. That brings the crowd back to life. Through box the score, she's now down 14, but she can add on the 10, so. She is closing, needs the free throws. Fill up with eight. It's a spare lead. Yeah. She's at 110 right now. So she does need the pins. And no. Oh, too bad. Oh, man. She needed that. Bruno DeFeo advances. Otherwise, Janet had these two pins gone down, had the opportunity. Oh, a fine hand for Janet Pop. Has made history tonight. As Bruno DeFeo, number five, takes out number four, and Tom Olsa waits to step up and bowl on. Once again, Bruno DeFeo is leading off as he has won the first match and moves up the ladder. And all he's done is in the first match, he takes out the first woman of the show, and now he's bowling against the most decorated man of the show. That's right. Tom also, who is appearing in his 10th. Spare Lee was not made by Bruno. He still has two pins. The three and the six, it is a 10 box. Mm. Spread eagle. No wood to help, and obviously on the left, the two, four, seven, on the right, the three, six, ten. Got a couple on the left. It will be an eye. And now here is Tom Osta. League average 136. High single 209. High triple 504. This is Tom's 10th live show in the 19 year history of the telecast. His 88th overall appearance, which is a program record. And he has won this event four times. Tom leaves the 1, 3, and 8. And he's been runner up three more times. So he's been at or near the top seven times. And that's out of nine previous. Oh. Made it. One, three, eight for a spare. And the familiar T, 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 T chant. That's why he gets it, and that's why he's, he's one or two in the seven of the nine years he's been here. He is also our defending champion. Five is the fill, and he's looking at a slightly unusual configuration, which is the one, excuse me, the two, four, five, seven, and eight. Oh, not quite. Seven pin didn't go. It's a ten. 
19 for DeFeo and a 25 for Olsted. We've done two boxes of this strain. And Tom Morgan waits the winner of this one. All right, Bruno DeFeo again online. Young bowler from East Boston, now looking at three, six, and seven. Mm. It's such an electric start in the first string, marking his first three boxes. Mm -hmm. It's a ten. We took a look over to Ralph because there was a piece of wood in the gutter, but he was watching it all the way, and it was a clean hit. One, three, four, excuse me, seven and eight. Mm. He thought he had that one. Seven pins still there. A pin. As all of you know, or anybody just tuning in, I want to remind you, this is live. Two full on the head pin that time for Tom Ulster. And he has left six pins. The two, four, seven on the left and on the right, a triangle made up of the three, six, and nine. He still has three pins, the three, the six, and the seven. Rolled into the seven, but it did not knock it down. And again, very quickly, just uh, as I do on the noontime program or the 11 o'clock program now, I do describe most of this for those of you who have limited sight. So uh, for those of you perhaps uh, maybe seeing it and not as often as we have the other and uh, wonder why maybe this guy is talking so much and describing things I already see, that's why. The seven and ten, he got the seven, the ten is still there. He had a lot of wood and he was trying to scatter it. So both of the bowlers have done four boxes and the lead is five pins for Tommy Olster. Fifth and sixth boxes coming up now for Bruno DeFeo. Once again, rolling as the challenger, in a sense. Two pins left, the three and the six. No wood to help. Bruno hasn't marked in this string yet. Ooh, still he, hasn't. No, he still hasn't. Nine. Tell you what, you just hate not to clean the table, don't you? <laughs> don't want to leave a little untidy pin there. It's just untidy. <laughs> Isn't that a nice word, untidy? Absolutely. <laughs> you didn't leave anything there. <laughs> That's a way to clean it up, isn't it? Almost a leading by five after four. Oh, he has to Anything you can do, I can do. And now we'll see if he can do it better. Double, double. Oh, look at the leave. Five, seven, and ten. Took the five out. Bills to strike with eight. Eight. 
and uh, leave seven and ten for an eight box. Now we'll see what Bruno gets on his strike. Let's see what Bruno does as he's attempting to fill. First one leaves a spread eagle. Not bad. Good ride. All right, he got eight for the fill. Special note for Channel 5 viewers. We have a new starting time for all shows during the fall football season. 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays. 10.30. The fill turned out to be good with eight pins down, and he has a 10 in the seventh. And the difference between the two was minimal. Four little pins. Bruno has everything down except the four pin. Yeah, there's four little pin. There's one little pin. But that one looks awful skinny now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, Ooh, surprise, surprise. He had three options in there. One standing, two down. He hit one of the downs. Usually, you know, bowlers of this caliber do not use the wood if they can get a clean shot at the pin. But uh, that was a break for Tom Olsta, I would say, in that instance. <laughs> he doesn't need many, I'll tell you. Tommy has the seven pin to pick up with two pieces of wood right in front of it. Well, Tommy's waiting for that wood to settle down. I want to give a special thanks to Sil Angelotti and his great staff here at the Pilgrim Lanes. Because they do a great job for us and for all the folks who are here. Tommy has a spare. Tommy gets a split here too. He got just five and he's leaving on the left hand side the two, four, seven, on the right the three, six. No wood. Ooh, right down the middle. Right with down nothing. the highway. Oh, oh got it! A comebacker as he got the three pin to go. That's what we say in the business, a nice 10. It gives Tommy Osta a nine pin lead. We head to the final two boxes. We got a letter, you got a letter done from an Elaine Evans. And as Bruno is bowling, I'll fill you in. This is an interesting letter. Good. Elaine writes the letter because you have a big fan, Lenny Kelleher, and he, and he has watched all the bowling faithfully for more than 20 years. Well, today, they are getting married, Lenny and Elaine. They're getting married at 6.30 tonight. <laughs> they didn't know. Well, they, they set their VCR, though. Good. First ball nets him seven and leaves the five, seven, and eight. I wonder if they'll watch the tape tonight. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> oh, what a great try by Bruno DeFeo. <laughs> but an excellent nine fill, which, of course, was the deficit he faced. And he's got a 10. He's got a 10. So Bruno at 115 will sit back and see what Tommy Ulster can do. And Tommy with uh, with two tens would be tied. That's a slow start, but one, two, four, six, and ten. Oh, 
I'll tell Six you. and ten. These are important pins. You sure are. He's got them. Okay. Now he goes into the final box. And uh, if, if I have it right, he needs 10, yeah, 10, 10 to tie and uh, 11 to win. He needs 10 for a tie. And he is looking right now at 2, 4, 5, 7, and 10 with no wood. All right, he got, All right. The, he got the 10 out of the way. I'll tell you what. Now, four and seven, and this is, he got it! He leaped in the air as he has done so often. It is a two-box roll-off to break the tie. Great pressure put on by Bruno DeFeo, and great comeback by Tom Ulster when he had to have it. And Bruno leaves three, five, six, seven, and ten. No mark here. Seven on one side, no wood, and on the other, the six and ten. And Bruno rolls an eight, leaving the corners full, the seven and ten. He put a lot of pressure on Tommy Olsta. Boy, Tommy sure had pressure in that last box, the tenth. Bruno has a real thin hit here, leaving the three, six, well, actually, it's a five, six, three, five, six, and ten. <laughs> I'll get it, yeah. And the four and seven with one piece of wood in front of the four. He still has four pins standing. Now, remember, this is a two-box roll-off. Seventeen pins, so Tom needs eighteen to win. Bruno DeFeo, who won his first match against Janet Park tonight. In overtime with Tommy Olster. Now Tommy is looking at the two, seven, and ten. Wood in front of the seven, wood to the right of the two. And another piece that uh, probably won't be in it. It's back near where the eight would be. Between where the eight and nine would be. He fires and he got two. All right. That puts him in the lead by one. Make it two. He has 10 and as you well know, he needs eight in order to move on. Got seven, eight. There it is. Right there. That did it. Almost on the line again. This time he is the challenger in a sense because he has moved up from second spot and is challenging our third place finisher. And uh, that's Tom Morgan. Right now, Tom also looking at one, three, seven, and ten. Two pieces of wood off to the right of the three pin. Corners are still full. Tom knocks down the 10 pin, so it is a nine box. Tom hasn't bowled frequently since May. Injuries have kept him on the sidelines. He had that wonderful 22-week streak, of course, mm -hmm. on the noontime show. Mm -hmm. 
And a little punch out on the left side as it's a half Worcester taking out the two and eight. Some more wood chopping. He still has five pins up. The object pin now is the three. He has the three, six, and ten on the right, and on the left, the four and seven. He didn't hit the object pin. He did take out the six and ten, so it's a seven box. Now Tom Morgan. High single, 192. High triple, 490. League average, 127. This is his 14th appearance of the show, runner-up in 1983. <laughs> The head pin and the nine pin with wood in between. Ooh, no, dropped that one too soon. Left the head pin. And nobody is rooting any harder for him than his brother Mike, who uh, has been on this program back in the days when it was just two bowlers, the two top bowlers. And uh, he defeated Joe Donovan. In that one. Now Tom Morgan. Is it, gonna, it fell the wrong way as far as he was concerned. He has two pins, the two and the six. No. Nope. It's a nine. So neither marks, each leaves pins. Two boxes into this string. The winner of this string will move on to a two-string championship roll-off with Dick O'Connell. And that's for the big money. For a moment, that looked like it was going to be a Tom Olsta strike, but he has left two pins, the four and the ten. Wood to the left of the four, and nope, didn't get it. It's a nine. One, two, ten. All the wood is in back. Got the two. But obviously what he wanted to do was kick number one over to pick up the ten. Like that. Like that, yeah. Now Tom Morgan. So Tom also has gone four boxes without a mark. Tom Morgan right now looking at the one, two, and eight. Wood to the left side of the two pin. Two full on the head pin. And between them, they've bowled seven boxes and neither is marked. The ten. You certainly wouldn't have expected that, right? And it's a spread eagle. No wood. Two, four, seven on the left. Three, six, ten on the right. Tom Morgan fires and gets just one, the three pin. And guess just one more, it is a six box and uh, they are tied at 35 right now after four boxes of the one string roll off and we'll be back right after this. Fifth and six boxes in this roll off for Tom Osta to determine which of these two goes on to challenge our top seed. Just before he stepped up, Tommy wiped his brow, and that was the relaxed rhythm, if you will, and perfect hit.
It, uh, when he hits them, Ulster style, it's sort of zap, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. gone. Yeah, that was the classic one, yeah. So close to doubling. Nine is the fill. And nine is the remaining single pin. It's a 10. To the first four boxes, the, both Tom Morgan and Tommy Ulster were at 35. So a little breakaway for Ulster. Let's see how Morgan responds. All right, he's got a diamond to work on on the left side, and these can be tough. This one is made up of the two, four, five, and eight. And that's why mm -hmm. so many times the bowler will get two of them or three of them. Saw a quick reference on the electronic scoreboard just a minute ago. Tommy Morgan got a 10 in the box, the fifth box. So he really has total pinfall of 45 through five boxes. Single pin now. And yes, he has it. A spare for Morgan, and now Ulster comes up for the seventh and eighth. A thin hit. If I sound surprised, I am because it's Tom Ulster, that's all. Well, you know, I just don't think he's feeling well done. <laughs> he came back with a good comeback. But I think his feet are bothering him. That's what's been bothering him the last few months. And when your left foot's bothering you, it's difficult to be consistent. Eight is the fill. There you go. He has two. In the last two boxes and in three of the last four, Tommy Olsta has marked. Suddenly see a lot of orange spots in his score. And that score you see, by the way, is the correct score. Tom Morgan and Tom on his spare gets four. It's a spread eagle. Phil oh, is three. three. Yeah. It's, excuse me. The eight, eight pin is back there. It was three. Nine box. Down by 15 and opposite a spear. Tom looking at four horsemen right side and back the nine pin over on the left the seven pin. The pressure begins to mount ever so, because remember, this is the one string roll off. He's 77 down, and he's opposite a 92 plus the fill. So. Also has a strike. That's just about it, huh? Yeah, I would say so. And uh, it looks now as if it will be in the final two strings, the championship two strings. Two guys who are multiple winners here of this championship show. Dick O'Connell, who's won it twice. Tom Ulster, who's won it four times. Five and nine, almost. He has left the nine pin. And Ulster has been bowling better as this evening has gone on. The last just missing. A nine. Now Tom Morgan. Good finish for him. You see also seven, eight, nine marks. He also marked in the fifth box, so.
What Tom needed there, of course, we all know, was a strike. He could. Uh, it's it's an interesting split, the seven and nine, but he does have wood that makes it possible, but not probable is what I was going to say, and he didn't. A ten. Takes a ten in the box. He's down by 34. Right. We'll just watch him play out the string. So Tom Olsto will be going against Dick O'Connell. It's really remarkable, as we mentioned at the beginning of this of this particular match. Olsto's been in this show ten times, and this will be he will either be the champion or the runner-up again. And Tom Morgan congratulates Tom Olsta. 35 pin win for Tom Olsta over Tom Morgan. The championship yet to come. Dick O'Connell. High single 206, high triple 477. Lee average 127. He is our top seed. And because this is a two-string roll-off, he will lead off in the first of the two, and then he will be bowling second in the second of the Great two. Great start. And this is uh, what most people expected, and I think what perhaps most people wanted to see. Two of the very best, Dick O'Connell and Tom Olsta. O'Connell won this in 87 and in 88. His first bonus ball gets him six and leaves the diamond on the right side. Three, five, six, and nine, and no wood. He came back and got it, so what a start for Dick O'Connell. Strike and spare. As Brooks Robinson once said, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And good people make their own breaks. Well, it's fun to watch these two guys. I'll tell you, and, and as you pointed out, Tom having the bad left foot, left leg. He is at a bit of a disadvantage, but they're just so great. It's such a pleasure to watch these two guys. But it almost looks, Don, like it's it's actually warming up. I mean, he's, he's getting into a flow. He's falling much better the last seven marks. So a spare now for Tom. Dick began with strike and spare. Tom begins with spare. Let's see what the fill is right now. And turned out to be a little bit thin. Six. Two, four, five, and seven. There's wood right in front of the seven. Let's see if we can do it. Yes, he did. So each begins with a mark. Now Dick O'Connell comes up. You see a replay of what Tommy Olsta just did, which leaves him a mark in his second box. <laughs> Phil is seven. Dick O'Connell looking right now after getting a seven pin drop at the three, six, and on the right, and the four pin over on the left. This would be something if he can make it go, no. So the nothing but marks stops after four. A 10. As Don mentioned earlier in the show, Tommy Ulster ran off a remarkable string. Dick O'Connell finished. He won the last eight weeks of the season. Hit 435 and then a 452. It got better as the end went on. And he'll be back after the ladies have had their turn. He'll be back as defending champion. And I have a feeling that Tommy's 22 in a row is somewhere in the back of his mind. Mm -hmm. All right, right now he is looking at the three pin on the right, the four and seven on the left. And the, the only wood is off to the right. No. Oh. He got that piece of wood spinning over toward the four and the seven, but it didn't go. Oh, a 
a nine. I think about everybody, including Mr. O'Connell, we're expecting that to be a ten. Now Tom Oster. Five. That's the fill. Four horsemen left side, nine pin. Wood in front of the nine and mm. chopped wood, chopped out number one. I often wonder if the pressure now is greater or lessened because it's a two string versus the one string to get here. The lead through boxes scored seven for Dick O'Connell. Six pin standing, so he has wood between the three, six, and ten on the right. And then in addition to that, he has nine pin, no, excuse me, five pin, and over on the left, the four and the seven. <laughs> to nine. Back to back nines for Tommy Olsen. Dick O'Connell on the line now to roll in the fifth and sixth boxes. He leads by seven in the first of the two final box, final strings, I should say, not boxes. See, I got you going. See? You're right. <laughs> you got me going earlier. <laughs> okay. It's just like the hiccups are yawning, you know? They're contagious. I caught it. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the two and eight out of there. And he came back and made Despair. After such an unassuming start for O'Connell to come back and make the mark. Look at the way this goes. And that seven pin Good finally point. goes. Eight. Six and nine. No wood. Those are the two pins standing. Yes, he has it. And he's marked two boxes in a row. gets a break here. He had four horsemen standing. Two have dropped. He now has one and two. Oh. Ooh, you rarely see him do that. As he missed the head pin and took out the two. A ten. Fifteen pin lead at the moment for Dick O'Connell. Tom has a seven pin alone over on the left and on the right the six and ten with wood. Three pieces. Couldn't get enough sidewall bounce. For a 10. And that'll make his fourth straight box without a mark for Tommy Ulster after starting out this match with two. Now Dick O'Connell trying for three in a row. And we still have the same bonus as we have on our morning show. He's going to have to do it with a diamond. The diamond right now is made up of the three, five, six, and nine. And there's a piece of wood that he's motioning to get out of the way. Politely coaxing, but it's not cooperating. His 
long as the wood was there, he decided to use it, but it only took off half. And the three and six still there. To 10. And a 21 pin lead through the boxes that have been scored so far. Dick O'Connell. One, two, four, and eight on the left, six and ten on the right. The one piece of wood is in back of the four pin. Still four pins standing. Two, four, six, ten. It's an eight. Tommy Ulster stepping up to bowl in his seventh box, first string. This is a two string total. We fit kind of a methodical roll here. That's where he wanted the big one. Came in in the proper pocket, the, the one two pocket, but they didn't explode as they sometimes do, or often do, I guess I should say, for this guy. Big surprise, six box. Yeah, how often do you see them right up at six on them? Not 20, very. 25 pin lead. Pin lead. Earl O'Connell through the box is scored. Now Tommy has a spare lead, not the easiest, but uh, he has the five and the eight. He made it look easy. It isn't difficult, but so, so many times you see a bowler hit one of those and kick it off to the side and not pick up the other. All right, Dick O'Connell now in nine and ten. Two pull. Two, four, seven on the left, six and ten on the right. One piece of wood parallel to the pit. Right in the middle. Not quite. At eight. Both of these guys are going to have to do some bowling just to reach their averages. Dick O'Connell is at 116 with one box left. His average is 127. Tommy's is 136. Mm -hmm. he's, he's laying 85 with an extra ball. There's the strike. Tom Ulster's going to have some work to do. Well, if he rolled three here. Nope. Eight. Leaving nine and ten. Eight. An eight. All right, Tom Ulster getting some support from the gallery here. At a 134 first string for Dick O'Connell. Tom Ulster filling a spare in the eighth. Here it is, and he gets an eight. At a spare leave. Four and seven. Mm. He can't believe that. He hit the piece of wood that was to the right, but that wasn't why he missed it. He just was going to miss it anyway. It's a ten. And a split here on the left side, two, four, seven on the right, three, six. No word. And that takes care of the left side, but no mark. Yeah. 
It's 10, and he's down by 21. 113 for Tommy Olsen, 134 for Dick O'Connell. A 21 pin lead for the top seed, O'Connell. But we have a full string left. Tom Olsen leads off in the final string, down by 21 pins. We have seen so many comebacks by this guy. Right now, he is looking at the three, five, six, and seven, no wood. And he pulled it off. A beautiful spare, and somehow or other, you knew he was going to do it. You're just not even surprised when yeah. he does it. All right, he's got the four horsemen left side on the six pin drop. And nope. Ooh. That time. That was supposed to be a one-two pocket hit. Instead, it was two alone. Nine. I'd like to offer a special hello to Don Riley's mother, Betty Long, a fan of our program. Mrs. Riley is seriously ill and watching our program on television tonight. Our best wishes go out to her. Don, of course, is the numbers man extraordinaire for our program. And I second that. Strike them all, Betty. Half Worcester, right side. Dick O'Connell punching out the three and nine. Nice try for a comeback, but he has left two, the eight and the ten. And they're still there. An eight box. <laughs> Spread eagle. So far he's thrown four balls in this string that he'd like to have each one of them back. Uh huh. Two, four, seven on the right. Three, six, ten on the other side. And oh, he punches out the six. Make that five. I'll tell you what, that 21 pin lead could go away if it keeps going like that. <laughs> Pair of eights, and it's down to 12. Right. Now Tom will stop again. His head was, was pretty thin, but uh, he got a couple of more and rocked two more. Two, seven, ten, and four pieces of wood on the deck. He'll look at this and with that uncanny ability, he has to plan what's going to happen. He almost pulled it off. I thought he was going to get it. I really did. Got everything except the 10 pin, and he did send a piece of wood over in the direction to try to knock it down. Now for a 10. He's got it. That was a muscle 10, too, because there were four pins that were wrapped down around it, and he still plowed through them. That's right. They had a wall right around it. Right mm -hmm. down the middle, punching out one and five. A couple more. He still has five pins standing. An unusual seven. And a thin hit for Dick O'Connell as he has left two or five, seven, eight, and ten. Two, piece, two pieces of wood, excuse me, between the two and the five and in back of the five.
And he continues what has started out and, and has been a disappointing string. I imagine there might be a little tight collaring here. Just a wee bit. It's back to what I was talking about in the in the first string between these two. Where is the pressure? Is the pressure in the first? Is the pressure in the second? Is the pressure on the lead bowler as they head down to the last few boxes? On both, I guess. He was expecting a big hit there. He has left four pins. Three, five, six, and ten. Sometimes all it takes is one to get the rhythm back. Dick O'Connell with a mark here in his fourth box, second string. O'Connell with a lead, but it's catchable. We'll finish out the championship in just a minute. Final six boxes to decide the championship. Tom Ulster up first. And he has left now, and two pin has just dropped. He has the one, seven, eight, and over on the right, six and ten. Two pieces of wood are off to the left. He goes for the head pin and didn't get it. And it is a six box. One, three, nine with two pieces of wood. Ooh, left the nine. In the first string, Ulster was below his average, and in this string, he's playing below it as well. And O'Connell rolled better than his average in the first string. Okay, Dick O'Connell coming up now, working on a spare. He rolled in the fourth. And he's opposite a six and a nine. Great opportunity for him to, if not put it away, at least make it very, very difficult for Tom Ulster. They crumbled for him, but uh, he still has one and uh, four and seven. With one, two, three, four, five pieces of wood. He used them. So he has back-to-back -back spares. And the lead that was shrinking is now beginning to grow. He had a 21-pin lead coming into the second. He already now has a 26. And a big nine. Being opposite a six box by Tom when he rolled his spear. And another one. There you are. Three in a row. $50 in bonus money for Dick O'Connell. Tom Osta now leaving the two, three, six, and ten. The defending champion is on the ropes. A seven. So it goes seven, six, nine, seven for Tom in his last four boxes. Almost. One pin standing, the nine pin. He marked in the first box of this string. Don't see that very often, do you? It's a ten. He marked in the first box of the string and hasn't since. And O'Connell's riding on three in a row. All right.
right, he has uh, an eight pin drop and two pins to pick up for another $50 in bonus money. Although he, he's not thinking about $50 in bonus money right now. He's thinking about that $10,000. He got it. Well, maybe he's thinking, hey, 50 bucks is 50 bucks, you know? Nice read, nice hit, nice play. And that is four in a row. Well, maybe he can make it five in a row, although it won't be easy. He has wood all around the um, eight pin, and he also has the ten. To the matters of championship, he has at the current moment a 55 pin lead. He's Get over. <laughs> Get a little Boy, how'd you like that body? <laughs> I loved it. I'd like to have a shot at that, a freeze frame of him. I didn't realize he was so nimble. All right, final two boxes now. And a 55 pin lead for Dick O'Connell. Wow, one pin. Still five pins standing. Seven. All single numbers coming right down the, well, actually, yeah, the the, there was a the 10. There box. was a 10 yeah. in the eighth box. Yeah. Almost a strike. It is a spare. You know, that was an honest cheer. That was not a sarcastic yeah. cheer. Oh, yeah. That was an honest cheer. Guy has done so much. And eight more. Dick O'Connell doesn't have to drop a pin. Just a question of what the final score will be. Dick O'Connell has $100 in bonus money and $10,000 for being our winner. Third time he's won it. Tom has won it four. Wonder what this feeling is like to stand up there. No, you don't have to drop a pin. You don't have to do anything. The stage is yours. One pin left. And he's still pinning. The end of the long road for Dick O'Connell. It's been a terrific ride. He is the winner of the 1994 championship show. Will he go out in style, Don? You know, Mark here throwing. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I think he will. Yes, sir. And now I think he'd like to have a nice big fill right now. Fighting right down to the last box. Oh, right down the middle. And there he is, Dick O'Connell, being congratulated by Tom Ulsta and Janet Pott. And we'll be back with the presentation right after this. This Candlepin Bowling Championship show was sponsored in part by the Massachusetts Bowling Association. And because of that, I'm going to tell you right now that Phil Hamrick, Vice President of the Massachusetts Bowling Association, is coming in here. And Dick O'Connell, who has won for the third time, has won $10,000 plus $100 in bonus money. You son of a gun, you did it again, huh? I'd just like to say one thing. Tommy Ulster is probably the greatest champion this game's ever seen. It was a pleasure bowling against them. Tommy. Phil, 
You have a something to, to present here. Congratulations. It's never a dull moment when you folks are bowling. Never a dull moment. Yeah, it was, a, it was really something to see you two guys going against each other. I think that everybody in the house expected that uh, that's probably what was going to happen, that it was going to be you two down into the final. And uh, you got off to a little bit of a start, but you never could relax with that guy, could you? No, you, you can't let up one boxer, Tom. He's just too explosive. And that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. Don't